welcome to the Molly Motorsport YouTube channel. I'm Brandon. Today we're gonna go over how to file rings. So why is this important? If you're trying to make the most horsepower possible, this is a critical step in building your engine, no matter which type of engine you're building. If you get this wrong in the wrong direction, then you're gonna potentially break the top of your piston off. You don't want that. And if you get the gap too wide, then you're gonna leave precious horsepower on the table. Okay, now that we've talked about what ring filing is and wh why we're gonna do it, we're gonna go over some of the tools that we're gonna use. So we've got the rings here. Here we have a ring squaring tool. We need some feeler gauges. We need some files. This is a real fine file. We need some way to keep the rings separated to what cylinder that we actually gap them for. And then we have two methods here to do the actual ring filing. We have an electric option and we have a manual option. So once you open your power pack kit, you'll find your ring box here. And in the bottom underneath your rings is our instructions. So this is gonna show you, there's a chart in here that's gonna show you what we're gonna gap our rings to. So depending on your application, and it will vary for high performance street, circle track, drag racing, nitrous, large nitrous, small boost, large boost, and diesel, we actually, actually multiply our bore size in inches by this factor here, and that gets us what our gap would be. So for example, if you have a four inch bore, you would multiply four times 0 0.0045, and that'll tell us what our top ring end gap should be. Same for the second, and notice that the second in most instances is gonna be a larger second ring end gap than the top. Um, so that, that'll vary. Some of them, they're the same. And then we have our oil ring rail minimum gap. Now that you know what the ring end gap needs to be, we need to see where it actually is to start with out of the box. So the first thing we're gonna do is install the ring in the cylinder. And then we need to get it squared up so that it's the same distance down from the deck to the ring. So to do that, we're gonna use, this is actually a ring, a piston installation tool, but we can use it to square the ring up. So we'll put it in there and push down on it. That squares the ring up, so it's the same distance down from the deck. And then you can see the end gap here. We just have a really small end gap to start with, so we need to check and see where we're at. So we'll start with a ten thousandths and see if that'll go in. And that doesn't want to start, so we'll go a little bit smaller. We'll go down to a five. And a five just starts in, but it's a little tight. So let's check a four and see how that feels. So we'll check the four thousandths. Okay, that goes in and then it's got just a slight drag on it. So that's, that's what we're looking for. So currently we're at four thousandths to start with and we know where we need to end up based on our chart and our application. So the next thing we need to do is actually start filing some off of the ring. Okay, so we're gonna start filing our ring now. We'll take it out of the cylinder. And we're gonna start showing you how to use it with the manual ring filer. So two important things, you definitely wanna file these ends square. So I would recommend only filing on one side and leaving the other side, the factory edge. So at a later date, we can actually butt them up against each other and check to make sure that we're still square. If you file some off of both sides, you might get this side crooked and that side crooked and you don't have a reference to square it up against. The other important thing on both tools is to file inward. You want your wheel turning this way. And that just helps prevent any kind of chipping out here if there's any kind of coating, face coating or anything in this ring. 
it'll help prevent chipping that out. So we'll put the ring in here and then we square it up against the wheel, hold it with our finger and start following. And I'm keeping light pressure against the ring here with my finger against the wheel. And this is a diamond impregnated wheel, so it does remove a lot of material pretty fast, even on a steel ring. So you can see there that we followed that side, and then this side is still the factory edge. So we can butt them up against each other and check and make sure that we're still square, that we're cutting it square. So if you do butt them up and you notice that it's tapered one way or the other, when you put it on here, you can adjust it a little bit this way or this way to compensate for that. But we wanna get this as square as possible. So now we'll look at doing the electric option. So now we're gonna look at the electric ring filer. So we will put our ring in here and there is a stop gauge here to butt it up against. So this will actually square the ring up and then you might need to adjust this knob here. So what this does is moves the ring this way or that way to get it squared up based on the bore size, a smaller bore size ring versus a larger bore size ring. You might need to adjust this. So once we've got it squared up against our stop, then we will tighten it down and bring our stop up. So now we need to move it in with this knob here until it just starts to touch the wheel. And once I turn it on, it's going to be loud, but we're going to move this in until it just touches the wheel. And then we're going to zero our dial indicator here. So then if we need to take off, say, 10 thousandths, we can dial this in to 10 thousandths and take that off or take it off in increments if we need to do 5 thousandths and then another 5 thousandths. So I'll turn it on and we'll get it zeroed out. We'll move it in until it just starts to touch. You can hear it right there. And we'll zero out our doll indicator. And then we'll move it in and take off five thousandths. There's five thousandths. And then we'll go another five for a total of ten. just like that. So we'll now deburr it and take it back to the block and check and see where our progress is at. So now that we've got the ring filed, we wanna put it back in the block to check our gap, but we need to deburr it before we do that. There might be a little bit of a burr there on the edge and that'll actually push the ring in and it'll give you a false reading on what the gap is there. There is a wheel on this machine, but it's pretty aggressive, so I would recommend not using it. And what we're gonna use is a fine file. So we just wanna come in here and just barely knock that burr off of the top and the bottom and this outside edge. And if you'll notice, I'm filing to the inside Again, we don't want to, if there's any kind of face coating here, we don't want to chip that off. So we'll file that to the inside and that's enough. You don't want to put a huge chamfer on here or a huge gap because that's going to actually give you too much end gap. And we do see that that is pretty common. A lot of people will file way too much there. You just need enough to break that edge off. So we'll go back now and put it in the block and check and see where our progress is. Okay, so we're gonna put the ring back in the cylinder and this is the same cylinder that we started with and we'll cover that a little bit later, but we do want, you want to gap the ring to the cylinder that it's gonna go into. So we'll be sure and put it back in the same cylinder to check it. So we need to square it up. We use our same tool here, square it up. So you can see we've got a much larger gap now than what we started with. So we'll see where we're at. So we was at six, four thousandths. We took off 10 and then took off some on the hand crank. So we'll start out at, we'll start out at 12 just to see where that's at. Okay, 12, 13, 
Okay, 12 is loose, so we'll go up to, it should be at least 14. Fourteen's a little loose. We'll try a 16. 16 doesn't quite want to go in, so we'll try the 15. 15 thousandths has got a little bit of drag, so we're at 15 thousandths now, and we need a little bit more than that, so we'll repeat the same process, take it out, put it back on the ring filer, file some off of it, and then we'll check it again. It's just a back and forth, but you don't want to take off too much at a time because you don't want to go too far past what your gap is because you can't add material back to the ring. Um, if you do mess it up though, we do sell individual rings that you can buy sing single cylinders worth of rings, so it's no big deal if you mess it up, you didn't destroy everything. But if you take your time and just sneak up on it, then you won't risk doing that. So we'll go back to the ring filer, fall some more off, and then we'll check it again. Okay, so we filed some more off of the ring, and then for our particular application, this is a 4125 bore, and we are gonna use nitrous on this engine, so we're looking for a 25 thousandths end gap. So we'll start here with the 20, and that's loose. We'll check the 25 here, which is what we're shooting for. And that feels good. We got just a light drag on it, and that is perfect. That's exactly what we were looking for. So now that we've filed our top ring, we have that set. We need to do the same to our second ring. And it's the same procedure. We'll put it in the block, square it up, check and see where our gap is. We will refer back to our chart to see where we need to be, and then we'll file some off. And then we do have the oil rails. We give a minimum recommended gap for that. So we can put those in the bore and check them the same way. You shouldn't have to file anything off of these rails, well, but you should have at least a 15 thousandths gap. If it's larger than that, that's fine, but we don't want anything smaller than 15 thousandths. Okay, so now that you've got your rings filed, and these are the rings, all the rings for one cylinder, we have our second ring here, we have our top ring, and we have our two rails, and then we have our expander here, but this, of course, does not get gapped at all. Do not alter this at, or change it in any way. So we need some way to keep these organized and to the cylinder that we actually filed them for. So our suggestion is a Ziploc bag with the numbers on here of the cylinder that it goes into. You could also put them on a peg with a nail and hang them up, or you can put a piece of masking tape around them and then write the cylinder number on the masking tape. Um, whatever method works best for you, just some way to keep them separated to which cylinder that they go into. And theoretically, you should be able to ch put them in, back into any cylinder. Hopefully your cylinders are all the same size. If not, we got, that's another issue, but it's still best to keep them to the cylinder that you filed them for because if there is a slight variation, then that can change the gap a little bit. So depending on how long it's gonna be before you're gonna actually build the rest of your engine, this Ziploc bag is a good idea because it'll keep these from getting lost or getting any kind of rust or anything on them. So we'll put them in there and seal them up. And then we'll have them ready for when we go to put them onto the pistons to put the rest of the engine together. Okay, so to recap, we got our rings out of our box and we checked our chart to see what our end gap should be. Put the ring into the block. We used our tool here to square it up. Our feeler gauges to check what our initial gap is. After that, we took it out and then filed some off. Put it back in the, deburred it, put it back in the block, check the gap again, and then we could adjust from there, file more off if we needed to. And then lastly, once we're done filing, some way to keep the rings organized to which cylinder that they actually go back into. So for more how-to videos and tech tips, follow our channel, subscribe, and check out our other videos in our playlist. If you need more information, you can contact us directly through our customer service line or check out our website, mollymotorsport.com. All that will be in the description below. 
So that's going to wrap it up for following the rings. Thanks for watching. Wow.